mission is to bring the community together through um, guarding uh, relationships with our artisans, to our customers, kind of being the in-between. Definitely something I think the, the neighborhood needed, you know, kind of a one-stop. People can come in, they can get some, some grocery items or they can get cheese, and then, you know, we can pair uh, pair any cheese or meat with beer or wine, and I think that that was something that was good for good for us and good for the neighborhood too. It's like a a small farm to table cheese shop and neighborhood market, I think, and we have an emphasis on locally made things. I like the community piece of it. I like um, people coming into a neighborhood shop and shopping like it was done you know 50 years ago um, where people come in they know their name they know how they take their coffee they know what they what kind of wine they like to drink they know what they want for lunch um, often knowing their order before before they even have to say it i think that in this day and age that that is missing um, we realize especially being this is this is our baby when we, that we kind of did it hands on. Um, delegating responsibilities in the beginning was, was really tough, but I think we've grown and we've given out a lot of autonomy and responsibility to our employees, and which is one of the main reasons why we've grown so fast in the past three years. We're fortunate for that. We're going to keep on pushing our employees and giving them autonomy. Um, but the overall picture is this is our vision and stay within those guidelines and, and, and run with it. And I think that's what's kind of helped made us successful. It's called American Provisions, but we carry a lot of things that are European because, like certain artisanal products, you have you want to get the classic European version of it. And I think from the second I took over buying, I tried to make things as American as possible. Like I think with the name American Provisions, like we have this opportunity to be a really unique concept, having like all American-made things. And I just, whenever possible, I try to replace like big grocery items and things that are European with like a more local version. What I look for in terms of buying produce is uh, of course I'm looking to find the most locally sourced produce. So I just kind of wanted to, to, to choose stuff that would kind of please both, you know, people that wanted local versus people that wanted a, a good, respectable beer selection for the neighborhood. The main priority when I'm looking for a new product is like being local. That's like that's the first priority, and I think the second priority is some combination of like small batches and the taste of the product itself. Whenever possible, we like to shop locally. We don't put any parameters on what that means necessarily. You know, it's you know there are places that say. X percentage of our stuff comes within 100 miles, or you know, we don't we don't get into that stuff. But um, we recognize both the, the economic impact and the environmental impact that shopping locally has, um, and it's something that we're really mindful of. We like to kind of be advocates for for good people who work hard and, and and kind of share the story. A lot of the different things we do, I think, help to tell that story: the blog, the website, the way we interact with customers. I've worked really hard to create um, a very vibrant social media campaign that has a voice that I think um, identifies with our community and the people that we work with. Here at American Provisions, running the social media, I am dedicated to making it a two-way conversation about food and allowing myself to be the in-between um, between the customer and the um, food artisans that we work with and being that bridge. And I think social media is a direct way to have people um, get to know uh, who's making their food. The blog is our chance to sort of talk about what we're doing. Like, Erin's going to the Nantucket Wine Festival and she's going to write a blog about it just because I think people are interested to know like what the cheesemongers are up to, like what we're all doing, how we're interacting with the sort of farm-to-table scene that we call ourselves a part of, and the blog's sort of a way of showing people, like, we're going out in the community and we're visiting with these people. We're making sure that the folks that are making your food are as awesome as we say they are. And they are, all the time. <laughs> Being able to show people where their food is coming from, um, I think 
good. helps build community. It helps identify that there was somebody who picked this at one point, and that they have a name, and they have a story, and they have a history, and a life. It's sort of like why I put the effort into finding products with a story if we're not going to tell that story. A lot of these products describe themselves on the back, but we kind of try to put it into our own words. Like, we carry this because we think these people are really cool and here's why. But the signs, I think, are a way for maybe the more shy customer who's like not really into talking to people but still wants to know this stuff. Like, you can go around and read about everything. Like, I don't know, it's like a library, all of the information that we have lying around the store. People might be a little hesitant to buy cheese, you know, they might be a little nervous about goat cheese or something like that. So you kind of have to find a balance and, and know that you can sell. So uh, I have a tattoo of cheese on my arm here. Got it about a year ago and I don't regret it at all. It's great. So if, if, if we had started the store today, I don't know that we need, would have needed to put farm to table. Um, because I, I think, and this is awesome, um, but I think the, the further we get into this movement of people caring where their food for, comes from, they almost expect that, it, that um, a shop like this would be selling things from a farm, you know. Um, so I think that is a a really cool piece of, of where our, our food system is moving. Farmer table doesn't have to mean taking things from your farm and putting it directly on your table. I think there's there's other plenty of other small businesses that thrive off of uh, you know getting you that vegetable from the farm to your own table and I think those people are sort of forgotten about too. You know, they're just as important. They, they bring the local goods to the local people. You know, number one mode of survival, feeding. Food is something that brings humans together. So farm to table kind of means bringing that circle closer together. Um, so that not only we can, as consumers, know who's behind our food, but also that the people making our food can interact with us, too. Farm to Table, for me, is about traceability. It's about like the lineage of your food. Like We try to make sure everything we have, you can take it from you eating it back to where it came from in just a few short steps. And I mean, if you think about it, like, everything that you eat either came from a farm or like a lab, or I guess a factory. But like, that's crazy. Like, so many things we put in our mouths come from farms, but most grocery stores have zero emphasis on that farm. You would think every grocery store would have farm to take over on the top of it because farmers make everything that we eat. But to me, I think farm to table means you know where your food comes from, right? That that. Um, rather than, than have it grown in some faraway land by some who knows who or what um, and take you know planes, trains, and automobiles to, to get to us. Um, we can draw a direct line from, from the grower to, to the, the person who's ultimately eating it. I think Farm to Table also means the social and economic responsibilities that we have um, to minimize uh, the exchange of hands before it gets to the kind of end consumer. And farm to Table, I think, sends a message of knowing the farmer, knowing what they do every, every day and understanding their story and um, just enjoying the good food that they put out. I always say that, that for us, like the maker and the person who eats it, are, are the ends and as, as kind of short and direct as we can make that line is, is our goal. Um, and often it's a very zigzaggy, twisty, you know, uh, but, but farm to table, I guess to me means sort of making that distance as close as possible and letting the person who's eating it know the story behind where it came from.
Well, Vermont Creamery is 30 years old this year. So we started our business uh, on a farm. Uh, we were milking goats, uh, making cheese, and we were one of the first farmstead cheese companies uh, in Vermont to make fresh goat cheese. So Vermont Creamery is a creamery that uses Yankee ingenuity. <laughs> And by that I mean they, there's a lot of thought that goes into things before we make our decisions. Um, and we are trying to be as resourceful as possible. That company was founded by two visionaire, Bob and Alison, who, had, who believed that one day American, uh, Americans would be eating products like creme fraiche and fresh goat cheese and even aged goat cheese with Brinkley Rhine. And with that dream in mind, they really worked hard to build the business and uh, focusing on supporting local agriculture and farmers and buying the freshest and the best milk and cream available in Vermont and, and also turning that milk and cream into outstanding product. We thrive to make the best. No compromises here. Uh, the Bijou and the Coupole, they will go in there for maybe overnight and these might stay in here up to five days. But you can see how the wrinkles are starting to come through. We've also designed products that are you know, unbelievable that will fit on any cheese table in America. For example, the bun bouche, that rind and its ash, that sits at the front of your you know, palate. And when you put that in your mouth and you, it, the, the cheese warms up, the salt, the ash starts to dance a little. But then the pop goes right over the top to the back of the palate then you get a little more salt, a little more dancing around, and it's just magic. And that's by design. That isn't something that, uh, that you can do overnight. And then the stripes start to get wrinkly like a brain, and that's what we're going for. And so we have very high standard for ourselves, and, um, and we want to just please our consumer. When they try the product, when they try our butter, people say, oh my god, I never had butter like that before. And that's kind of the reaction we go after. Our products. Throughout the, the main. So every piece of bamboo is hand sorted. Um, and it, it gets kind of crazy around the holidays because uh, this room is so packed. We need to move cheese out of it. Um, I've seen cheeses that are uh, automated. And I, by automated, I mean they have uh, machines flipping the cheese, everything's set on computer. Um, there's really not that much human interaction with it. And while those cheeses are very consistent and um, I, you know, they're consistent and they're, they're good cheeses. I think what separates someone like us from um, an industrial style cheese is that level of care and attention that we put to each, and indiv each individual cheese. We're consistently inconsistent. And uh, so there's little touches that you just know that it's handmade and you know that there's a lot of love that goes into the cheese. A lot of thought and a lot of time and um, you know, there's, there's several people handling the cheese and, and looking through the cheese and making sure that everything is just the way we want it. These bijoux are really nice and wrinkly. The Cremant is right where it needs to be. That's, that aged about nine days. The bijoux, oh, it's around, this, this batch is eight days. Um, different times of the year, we can go up to 10, 12 days. Uh, but this particular batch, depending on the moisture, they're all different. So they're all kind of like you're, you're looking at it and you're making sure that, okay, maybe another day, even though we've been in there for 10 days, let's get one more and see. What We're not just sitting on our laurels with all these awards. Um, we were um, certified this year by B Lab as a B Corporation. And that is a very stringent process. We're one of only a thousand companies in the world to achieve this. A B Corporation is companies that really put their um, employees in the community and, and their um, uh, agricultural farm related sources first. And you can tell just by opening the cheese that there's definitely handcrafting going on in, involved with this. Um, so it's it's a, it's a huge thing for us, as being artisan, artisan compared to industrial.
and letting the seasons shine through. So they push water through because you can't really turn on um, your, your pasteurizer when it's dry. You don't want to run your pumps dry. So they push water through and then they... When you visit our Facebook page, it's not an agency that tells, you know, tell us what to put in there. It's all of us. It's Betsy taking the pictures. It's FM, you know, working on a recipe. It's, it's the people behind at the creamery that come up with the content. So it's all natural, you know, it's not driven by strategy. It's kind of, hey, we like that cheese because we really do like it. There's a little bit of fines in there, which are fats and proteins, but we really want to minimize that and we want our way to be as clear as we can get it. Um, so one way to do that is to just really be careful when we're ladling. Uh, we're basically scooping off the top it's almost like an airplane doing a touchdown and then taking off again. I think that farmers will run a very marginal business. And how do we help them? Um, we, you know, we, we think we're not farmers. So we carefully listen to where we are and try to figure out if there's things that we can work together on, collectively buying things. So our relationship is really close to our farmers, even um, closer as we move forward because we started that demonstration farm a year ago, dairy two years ago, and um, this initiative has been one of the company's greatest accomplishment. And we are just in the startup phase, but having a farm where you can demonstrate sustainability and show that in ten years, making you know making goods is going to be. Um, uh, it's going to be a way to, to support a family, to support the land. For the past few years, Vermont Creamery has continued to search for fresh goat's milk locally um, and has encouraged farmers, cow dairy farmers that are going out of business um, every year uh, to switch over and consider switching over to uh, producing goat's milk. Uh, because we feel like uh, at the right scale, it can be profitable. We have a farm that's, uh, that's in Randolph, Vermont, Ayersburg Goat Dairy, that's uh, the first demonstration dairy goat operation in the state, um, in, in the United States. So we are still in our first year of milking. Now we started milking in October, and since then we've been growing at a pretty steady clip. Uh, we started out with 15 animals two Augusts ago, and now we are uh, just over 500. Without milk, there is no cheese. Uh, so we, ha we have to pay attention to that. For us, it's, it's part of our nature. We don't even question it. This is our milking parlor. This is where 220 of our goats uh, come in twice daily to get milked. Uh, they uh, congregate in the holding area which is right behind that door and then we open up the sliding doors on either side and they come walk right in and turn to get their grain. One more thing that Allison and I want to do, you know, we want to help our farmers achieve success and sustainability is very, very important. It's a lot to do with their cost, you know, the price of milk that we pay. We have to keep making higher and higher quality cheese more you know, specialty items so that we can afford to pay them on a quality basis for their milk, not on volume. We want protein, we want milk that is impeccable. Farm to table is getting back to our roots, knowing where our food comes from, um, and caring not just about this particular cheese that you're eating, but if you do care about this cheese that you're eating, you care about the farmer, you care about the person supplying the farmer, is, um, you care about the animals, you care about uh, the product, and everyone who's involved with this cheese. So here at Ayersbrook Goat Dairy, we feed uh, round bales, uh, dry square bales, and grain. Um, the round bales here are, we, feed, we, we like to feed the milkers a mixture of alfalfa and grass, and these are those this is from those big white marshmallows that you see by the side of the road a lot of times. What that is... Farm to table means to me is that I can, um, I can trust the food I'm going to buy. Um, 
feel the whole farm to table program is basically ensuring that when you buy a tomato or when you buy a cheese, it's gonna taste the right way and it's gonna be made the right way. Farm to table for me is knowing where your food's coming from and caring about where your food's coming from. Um, because farming should be sustainable. You know, that term sustainable farming is bogus, if you ask me. I mean, it's not farming if it's not sustainable. We've been doing farm to table for 30 years. I mean, farm to table is taking a product, whether it's a raw milk, making cheese at the community, and actually we want that to go to a local restaurant, a local retailer, or on a national basis someone that will promote the fact that this is a local product. This is an American product. So what American Provisions does is making sure that they connect the consumer with who makes the product and share the story and this is, this is what we're about as well. So um, we live and breathe <laughs> farm to table uh, program and, and hope to continue to invest in that as, as, as we plan the next 10 year vision of our company. Tell the community, be able to tell the story. This is the real cost of making food in the United States. If you want to, if you want to buy local products, you need to support these farms today. And that's what the message really is. Farm to table means more about get to know who these local farmers are. Support them anywhere you can. Ultimately, um, farm to table. It it from the people that produce the product. It shows our level of care for the for our our client base. So it's it's about the people that buy this cheese, and um, that's why we take so much care in every step along the way, so that you know what's going on with your food. I was following me. 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 I.